Infernal greetings, infernal blessings to all. Vana Noon here. Once again, we'll be discussing some important information on the left-hand path. In particular, today we will discuss the void. Why the void? Why do we speak about the void in the cliff off? Why do we speak about the void in the left-hand path in general? That is because the void is a concept that we all should thoroughly understand in our journey in the left-hand path. Through the tunnels of set, through the cliff off, the major gateways, shells, we encounter a lot of things. Entities, demons, forces, dark energy, so on and so forth. All of that is necessary for your awakening, your total awakening, not half of an awakening, not a quarter of awakening, your total or full awakening. In order to do that, much of the ritual work we do on this left-hand path is pushing us into the void. Now, what is the void? There's many definitions when it comes to the void. There's a scientific definition, religious definition. There is the metaphysical definition, so on and so forth. To us on the left-hand path, there's various definitions as well. Cosmic Serpent. Cosmic Serpent has a really good definition. She made a post recently on Instagram where she describes or breaks down what the void is. Very good. Check it out. Now we'll give you what my definition of the void is. The void is nothingness to something. It is a dimension. It is a plane. It is an existence where is there is non-existence that eventually leads to new existence. What does that mean? The void would be beyond darkness. Darkness is a state of existence within blackness. You may say, well, what do you mean? Darkness means black. No, it doesn't. Darkness is absence of light. Okay? Black is not really a light. There is a triple stage of darkness, which Elijah Muhammad alluded to long ago in various degrees, so on and so forth, into the nation of gods and earth, so on and so forth. Essentially, what you have to understand is darkness is within the state of light and the opposite of light, dark. Dark and the opposite of light. Blackness or the void is absence, absent of light and dark. It is absence of the polarities, apparent polarities of light and dark, which are really varying degrees of the same thing, a state of existence. The void is nothing. It is just that, no thing. So why it becomes difficult to grasp sometimes as adepts on a left-hand path is because we're always judging our existence based upon light and dark, good, bad, so on and so forth, because of the illusory appearance of polarity. The void, essentially, is no thing. What does that mean to a practitioner on the left-hand path and you who journeys on the left-hand path? What that means is you, as you're pushed into the void through your work, you are dissolving all aspects of the false you that you created, the false persona that you created to exist within the world you live in today. Some would call it the matrix, okay? This false persona, we gave life to. We gave so much life, it appeared real. It appeared real because of everything we fed into it, gave into it, sacrificed for it. 
And this false ego you created in this existence has plagued you many a times over as well. However, what's happening in the void is that all of that is destroyed. Totally destroyed in order for you to totally be transformed and reach your self deification all the falsities of self must perish. I've used this analogy before. Martial arts use this analogy. Tai Chi masters, those who practice the Tao have said this before. When you come into the left-hand path, think of this bottle. And this bottle is full of water. You literally have to open the cap and pour out the water, drink the water until it's an empty vessel. That is symbolic of you emptying out all the falsities you created of the self. All that which you think is true about the self must be destroyed, annihilated, good riddance. So all that remains is the true self, the demonic self. So the, the mask, the character mask you created to survive, the actor and actress must no longer exist. All that remains is the true self, the demonic self. But to undergo that task is a very painful process because we don't want to let go. The problem with people, this includes myself because I'm not taking myself out of the mix when I have gone through this process and I'm still going through the process. The problem with us as people is we hold on to the false persona we've created. We want to hold on to it so much and embrace it to the max, even though there's a lot of effery that comes with it. We do not want to let it go. And that is what binds us, chains us into this false reality we exist in today. Because we can never really truly see ourselves as long as the false persona exists. But that becomes a difficult task because when you come into the void, the sense of destruction is so profound that you feel like you're losing yourself. You feel like you have no control over yourself. And that causes anxiety, panic. It can create a panic attack. It can create a lot of different things as a result of us being destroyed. See, we want to hold on to the false persona. We love it so much because we put so much effort and work to it, but it's not really you. I don't mean that your creativity, I don't mean your musical skills, your artistic skills. That's not what I'm referring to. That is an expression of your demonic self. And this is why as an artiste, when you look at the body of your work, let's say art, painting, sculpture, you are sometimes in awe of your own work because you wonder how did you manifest this into the physical world? Like, yo, I did that. Almost as if it's not you really looking at it. It's rather the demonic self looking at it and you're now acknowledging it in this false reality. Like, yo, that is me who accomplished this task. This goes beyond this false persona I've created, this false persona I live in and not exist in. Do you understand? That's where this fuckery comes from. Okay? So, you have to be destroyed. There's no way around it. People will tell you what they want to. They'll paint it the way they want to. My experience, I'm just sharing from my experience. Everybody has their own. You can ask them what their experience is when it comes to the void. You have to be destroyed. Sometimes it is a physical 
feeling that is involved with that. Like I said, anxiety can occur, panic attacks, um, hyperventilation, massive migraines, pain in, in areas of your body you never knew you had pain in. That has to, has to be dealt with. You have to go through that process. So then the next phase comes into existence, which is devouring. But you'll be like, but yeah, all of that was destroyed. No, no, no. Just because you go under a phase of destruction doesn't mean that the old self will not try to come through again and reassert itself. Okay? There are some aspects of the self that will man try to outmaneuver and manipulate the very work you're doing. That is where the devouring aspect comes. Because the demonic self says, well, if this part of myself was trying to manipulate and outmaneuver me, then it's not something that should be destroyed, but rather transmutated. That's where the devouring comes in. You're taking in this energy powers, the attributes, the characteristics of this energy, and you're devouring it within you to transmute it to something now that is empowering for you, beneficial for you. That's right there is another undertaking that can be very profound upon you, your psyche, and your human soul. Therefore, the devouring is necessary in case whatever was not destroyed has to now be looked at from a new perspective. That perspective is if it went through this trouble to exist beyond the destruction, then it has to be something that I must empower myself through. So then comes different kind of work there. So let's say that this ability you have of manipulating the external world around you. That includes people. That includes, you know, things within your existence, your circumference, okay? That has to be destroyed, okay? Now, it rema whatever remains, remains, now has to be devoured. So now you're looking at, well, damn, I, you know, I have the ability to manipulate my external world for my benefit. So how can I empower myself through this? Because if this still manifested, still existed after the destruction phase, then I have to use it. So how can I use it? Depends. This is where you taking inventory of the self is necessary. You have to take inventory of the self. There's no way around it. The inventory of the self is your strengths and weaknesses. You must make a list of your pros and cons, your strengths and weaknesses, and stop BSing yourself and totally be as brutally honest as you can be when you make that list. Okay, now what remains from that list after the destruction phase? Here's the devouring phase. Now, okay, so your manipulation tactics are still alive, still well. You need to manifest a new job. You lost your old job. You're at a point where you are financially at a at a standstill or at a negative. What must you do is realize one of my strengths has always been seduction, manipulation, things of that nature. When you start applying to new jobs, use your manipul manip eh, manipulative, seductive skills with the interviewer. How do you do that? First of all, they're always going to try to dictate the conversation to you. No, they can start the conversation, but you have to be able to manipulate the conversation that highlights your strengths. And while you're doing that, you're planting little bombs, seeds or little bombs that explode later into their awareness of your potential to benefit them on the job. Why they should hire you. Plant the seed while you're giving them all your attributes, characteristics, and positives and why you would benefit their company. You should be manipulating 
their subconscious by planting those seeds, little bombs, little seeds to go off at a certain amount of time that you dictate with time that should go off and explode and decide this is the time, give me the job. Not ask for the job, give me the job. So now that survived. You are now empowering yourself to make your existence better for you, better for your loved ones or whoever you have within your circle of life. You make it better for you. This is the devouring phase. Finally, the last phase is the transmutation phase. Now you've successfully transmuted what can empower you into a, into a reality that you are now sitting on your throne, being able to utilize your powers at will. You have transmutated any weaknesses into strengths. You've destroyed the things that no longer benefit you or hold you, and you now successfully sit on your throne. Your throne as yourself, not your throne as Tahuti Ra Bay, not your throne as Ra Ta Ma, not your throne as Tiamat incarnated, not your throne as Lilith speaks to me and she gives me guidance. That's not you. You're still externalizing your sovereignty. You're still externalizing your power, externalizing your rulership and royalty of self. You're still externalizing. So why would I do all this work, go through the void, destroy, devour, and transmute to just give it right back outside of myself? That becomes a problem. Many times on the left-hand path, that becomes a serious problem. Because people still have the worship mentality. They do not understand or do not know how to get away from worshiping because they never did the work of destruction in the first phase coming through left-hand path, which is destroying religion as it was given to you and how you understand it. There are rituals that we can share with you to help you destroy religion. No matter which religion you came from, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, so on and so forth. There are rituals that are very impactful on the subconscious to create a new programming to rid any religious programming you used to have left. That is necessary. Morality must be destroyed. Not morality as is as if it's bad morality as if as in it was given to you dictated to you written for you shown to you as this is the right or wrong way those who gave you this morality ain't always the best examples and don't necessarily live by those same moralities so you have to question why am i enacting this morality that was taught to me so yeah, you have to destroy that too. Then we have to destroy the lazy gene. What is the lazy gene? Let me ex explain what it is. The lazy gene is something that's manifested, especially here in the new world, okay? Where we started to be comfortable with handouts. We stopped focusing on how we could develop and grow through our own personal works to receive a handout. Therefore, it made us lazy and expecting the handout and doing nothing for ourselves to further ourselves. That has to be destroyed as well. If you're a woman, you have to destroy the manipulation men have done to you to suppress your power your mind and your sexuality. If you're a man and the and vice versa was done to you, you have to do the same work and destroy those things. Then whatever remains must be devoured and transmutated. But the void is essential in your work. There's no way around it. 
In the cliff off, some would say it's Daath. Daath is found both on the Sifiroth and the cliff off. Oops. It's found both. Both are found there. It is actually that gateway in between both trees that one journeys. And it takes both sides to the void. There is a difference, though, in the Sifiroth to the cliff off, but that's for another class, another day. You have to be serious about your work. I have far too many experiences with book readers, with worshipers, with glorifiers, and just blind faith. What do I mean by that? There are far too many people that come into the left hand path and give glory to everybody but themselves. There's that's a caution flag for me. Because when you try to tell me of certain people being left hand path, they're not. They never said it in their works. They never said it in their videos. They might have used some of the concepts, but they've never claimed left hand path. Okay. So you have to understand that. When you claim left-hand path, the adversarial path. This is a passion. This is a life style. This is a process. And we wholeheartedly accept the chaos, the destruction, the devouring that comes with it. We don't run from it. We don't hide from it. We accept it. We accept it because we are our we are our own gods crucifying ourselves to only be resurrected into a new state of consciousness. The worshipers. These are the ones who worship celebrities, worship athletes. Worship everything but themselves. They're the ones who I watch videos sometimes when I don't watch them fully. I skip through because they nauseate me. Where they want to bring up, oh, I received the channel from Prince. I don't give a damn if you received the channel from Jehovah, Allah, Yahweh himself. It's irrelevant to me. You who co-sign that are nothing more than a dummy and servant for those people who channel things for you because that's a manipulation tactic. Love it or leave it. Call it like it is. I don't need to channel anything for anybody. I channel it for myself if I, in fact, do channel. That's always debatable and that's always subjective. So I don't co-sign people when they say they channel. It's for you and you personally, you just got a Messiah complex. So now you convinced yourself, your subconscious convinced yourself that you are more than what you are. And therefore, I am a savior to the world. You can't save the world. You can only save yourself. We can repeat this time and time again, but y'all still don't get it. Stop that nonsense. These are the people who want to hit you up on Instagram and say, I have a reading for you. I have a message for you. If you have a message, tell me why I got to pay for it. If it's that important, why you got to pay? I got to pay for it. Well, then leave me alone. I'm not paying for that. When I can do my own reading, my own divination and discover the very answers you think you're giving me. The problem is most people don't have confidence in themselves to understand that this, what you heard is what it is. So they want to get the confirmation from someone else. That's all it is. You already knew this before you even signed up for a reading. So these tarot card readers who want to just randomly hit you up in your in your dm and say oh i have a reading for you oh i could do it. stop it if you really knew who i was and you really paid attention to my page before you asked me that you will realize the works i've done the works i do the works i will continue to do i am not in need of your reading this lets me know you didn't read nothing nada zippo you just trying to get a buck and if you're that desperate to get a buck, you might need to go get a job. Okay? So, celebrity worshipers. They're the ones who want to tell you about, oh, well, 
Jay Z this and Beyonce that. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn if Beyonce has a Baphomet tattoo or not. I'm not saying that's factual or not. I don't care is what I'm saying. I'm not vested enough in Beyonce, Jay Z, or any other rapper or MC or DJ or whoever to give two craps about what they're doing in their personal life, what spirituality they're into or not into. I don't care. And that may hurt some people's feelings because you're under a spell, the spell of celebrity worship, which causes a mental illness. You don't even realize it's causing mental illness because you're so starstruck. I don't care. I'm not vested in anyone but myself that much. Oh, you're selfish. Yes, you're damn right I am. Outside of myself, I have a circle of people I care for just as much as I care for myself. But I still will always elevate myself because it's myself that has to get up in the morning. It's myself that has to take the steps. It's myself that must accomplish the task. It's myself. I can't rely on no one to do that. So as much as you want to worship Beyonce and Doja Cat and 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 Megan Thee Stallion and and Nicki Minaj and whoever the hell you want to worship, stop it. You are blinded by spell-bounding celebrity worship psychosis. You can't see it. If I do a video with someone, okay, and I have a guest on the show and they feel like they need to name drop 15 celebrities, I, I kind of put caution to that because I don't care. I don't care if Jay-Z or Beyonce or whoever's in a cabal. I don't care. I'm not in it. So it, I'm not vested. I don't care. I don't sleep with them. I don't eat with them. I don't walk with them. And if you want to do that, then you need to check yourself and ask yourself, why I want to be around these people so much. They don't care about you. All they care about is you paying them. That's it. They can put up a front, act like they care. They don't care, man. With all the millions of dollars these people got, they could contribute, do this, this, yes. And don't tell me who they contributed that much last year. Yes. Do you know why they contributed that much that last year? <clears throat> it's not because they care. It's called tax purposes, people. If you donate to charity, you get a big tax write-off. I own a business. Well, two businesses now. I own businesses. I know how the tax system works, okay? So it's a tax write-off. That's why they donate. It's not because they care. It's not because they really invested in helping you. It's because they get a ta major tax write-off so they don't pay hundreds of thousands of dollars back or a million dollars or so in taxes at the end of the year. That's why they do it. I don't care if Prince in the afterlife said, oh, this message is just for you. Bro, you mean to tell me that Prince wouldn't go to his family first. He'd come to you because you're so special. You see, you understand the syndrome I'm talking about, right? These are the so special people syndrome. I I heard I channeled Prince. Ooh, see that that's that aura. They're putting you in their aura, the ethers. They're making you smell the ethers, the aura of I'm so dope, so powerful, so wonderful, because I spoke to Prince. A brother like me looking like I could care less what Prince had to say. I love this music. Don't give two shits about the man himself. And if you go beyond that, then you're stuck under celebrity worship. People, wake the hell up. I don't care. Okay? And if this rubs you the wrong way, maybe it's talking to you. And you should own it and deal with it. Because that has nothing to do with your personal spiritual work. If Prince sends a message to you. Because I question that always. You alone, huh? Didn't go to your fan, didn't go to mom, dad, or any existing relatives first. It picked you out the blue. Some random dude out the blue. Some random female out the blue. Really? You can fool people once, twice, three times. By the time they fool the fourth time, they're basically your puppet, your slave, your servant. 
Hey, enjoy the process, man. Enjoy the process of these servants, slaves, and monkeys you got following you. Okay? But unfortunately, those monkey slave servants ain't going to do nothing for you after a certain time. You can only drain them so much. You can only drain their money so much. Eventually, you ain't going to have nothing from them. Okay? So when you take away all this celebrity spookism, worship crap, y'all want to kick what you got left? Oh, your predictions. Oh, now we're back in the prediction school. We're predicting things. You know, I can predict a million things and about 99% of them will be right. But it doesn't benefit me. They benefit you because that's what you live off of. Don't benefit me. I have my own finances. I don't need to fool people. I don't need to make predictions. And then if it comes close to my prediction, oh, look, see, I said it first. Stop stroking your ego and stop playing with yourself, man. Okay? You don't need to do this. This is why many of these people who claim to be left-hand path, many of these people who claim to be light healers, y'all need to go into the void first. If I could round you up, push you head first, I would. Because y'all need to really be devoured. Like, totally be devoured. I don't care. Listen to me closely. I don't care if China, Africa, and so on and so forth are icing out the dollar bill. I don't care. If you haven't prepared for stuff like that, if you haven't been doing your homework before that, then you deserve what you get for not being prepared when that shit hits the fan. Okay? Stop with the panic crap. Stop making people so panicky and worried. Oh, my God. This... Stop it. Y'all so external, you worry too much of what's happening around you that you don't worry about enough about mastering yourself. So when stuff like that hits the fan, you caught off guard. You caught off guard totally. Because you spend so much time involved in everything outside of yourself and never spend enough time mastering the self. Mastering the self is a full-time job. So don't tell me you work on yourself. That's a lie. If you really worked on yourself, you wouldn't be out there talking all this caca 24 hours a day, seven days a week, posting stuff on Instagram 24 hours, seven days a week. You'd be working on your craft, which is mastering yourself. It's a full-time job. Full-time job. Yeah, let me say it one more time, just in case it sleeps through your empty heads. Full-time job. But it's a full-time job beyond any job you could ever have that is the most loving, caring, passionate, dark, destructive, chaotic work you can ever, ever give yourself 100% to. Because if you can't give yourself 100%, who the hell are you giving your, your time to? What are you doing for yourself? Hmm. Just questions to make y'all think today, okay? Because when you get in the void, you're going to face a lot of this. If you haven't already been there, you're the only... Let me say this again for the big heads. People will tell me, yeah, I've been to the void. I've been to the void. Yeah, look at me. So what? Everybody in their life has probably been to the void a few, uh, once or twice. Whoopee. That's not the point of this discussion. The point is you're going to repetitively go into the void throughout the rest of your existence in the physical and even in the afterlife. It is a constant thing. So if you've been there once or twice and haven't been in 10, 15 years, you got a lot of work to do. Okay? Doesn't I don't care if you've been there once or twice. Whoopee. You wanna you want some raspberries for that? You want some strawberries, chocolate-covered strawberries. I'll send them to you if it's going to make your ego just pacify for a little bit enough for you to listen. It's a repetitive process. You will constantly go into the void. You got a lot of big heads that said, oh, I raised the kundalini, so I'm done. I'm a master now. You did that one time, bro. You did that one time, says you're not a master. Most, most likely, that was a random kundalini combustion so to speak it just happened randomly now do it every time oh i bet you can oh you can oh see that's the problem you're not a master a master can do these things at will 
That's why I never would take a title of master teacher. This, that's that's just egotistical crap. I don't need no titles. I'm Ravana. Period. Love me or leave me. Doesn't matter. The show goes on. Okay. You have to go through this prop process of the void repetitively. It does not stop. So don't get the big head and think I did it once or twice and I'm good now. I'm good. No, you're not. If you've lived 40 years, you have 40 years of garbage you must undo. 25 years. You have 25 years of garbage you must undo. Oh, but I didn't grow up religious. You still grew up in the society. Your program. Shut up. I hate those big heads too. I <laughs> My parents didn't grow me religion. <laughs> yeah, but you're still programmed because you're doing a lot of programmed things. And that's obvious when you look at the person, when you watch their behavior, when you see their Instagram pages or Facebook or whatever, you see their behavior. They're still programmed. What are you talking about? You could grow. Your mom could have given you the name Amon Ra. That don't mean you live it. That don't mean you are embodying that name. For that, they should have called you Jaquan or Juju, whatever the hell they wanted. But no, cut that crap out too. It is a process that you have to literally embrace within yourself and realize this is a lifetime process. It is not end here and now. Actually, it's only beginning and will continue to evolve throughout my life. My Journey to the void will only continue to evolve, only continue in its process, and I will be in that void plenty of times. Are you fine with that? Can you be just fine with that and not get the big head and think you're some magnificent creature because you've done that? Can you? I wonder. But again, I don't care because none of my business if you do it or don't. What I am speaking to are those who are realizing things about themselves and want to do real work. You book readers, you're not doing real work. You're doing someone else's work. Okay. There's a process we do in our classes that is different than a lot of these people will ever do. And I'm talking about these authors and these book writers and all these other people. There's a different process. Yes, we'll create rituals for you based on our experience, but eventually your experience, you have to create rituals for yourself in this class, in that class, in, that, in the classes we offer. You have to. You have to. Let me say it again. Into the mic. You have to create your own ritual time and time again in these classes. See, that is the difference between us and the other classes. We are making sure you empower yourself because eventually the onus falls back on you to create your own rituals. We gave you the templates. You did the work. Now create your own rituals. Can you do that? Of course you can. The question is, do you want to be a book writer? Or do you want, and I don't mean writer like a writer, I mean a book writer like riding a horse. Or do you want to eventually take mastery and control of yourself and say, you know what, I'm going to go through these classes with Ravana, with Beniti, and so on and so forth, because I know eventually I'm going to have to create my own rituals here. We're going to present this ritual I created, and we're going to see the results. And what I mean is these rituals you create, hey, we're going to give them to the rest of the class. So we can see how it benefits others as well. Because you'll be surprised the gift and ability you have to create rituals and how your ritual, the way you put your energy into it, may help someone else in their ritual work. In their process, it may help someone else. I see that. Cosmic Serpent. She used to be in the classes. That, that sister right there is taking off. She's creating her works. She's creating her works within this adversarial path, putting her 
love and compassion and energy behind that for those who really seek to heal the wounded child. To heal that child, that inner child. That is a process we all must undergo. Because of the cosmic serpent, I'm seriously thinking of doing shadow work class again, but a little more intense and a lot more deeper than I did before. Now, if you guys want the shadow work class, you YouTube video watchers, hit me up. The email address is on the description box of this YouTube video which is down there, down there, okay? Hit me up on Instagram under the Temple of the Black Serpent. And let me know, Ravana, please start up those shadow work classes. But these shadow work classes will go more into healing the inner child as well, as well as some void work of destruction, devouring, and transformation. If y'all want it, let me know. What I do know for sure, T, for a surety is the fifth temple of darkness on Patreon. Boy, I hope my Sith are ready because that spirit done hit me and there's some serious ritual work coming for the Sith. We're going to do some serious shadow work for the Sith, but this is different than what it's going to be in the temple of the Black Serpent. The Sith's shadow work, raw and vicious. Anybody who knows the energy of the Sith know it's raw and straight vicious. So those Sith out there who are looking for a Sith, Sith community to come to, come now. Because the Sith Temple of Darkness, we are creating some serious ritual work. We have a ritual there that was created by one of our Sith Lords, Shemaine. Okay? I'm not going to reveal her Sith name yet because she will do that. But she created a work there on destruction of family ties. Not to destroy your family. Please don't misunderstand that. It's sometimes we have these family bonds and ties that are not healthy for us. They're not conducive for us. But we've been so brainwashed that family is everything that we bypass the weaknesses, the, the, the negativity, the actions adverse actions of our family and allow it to exist because we've been brainwashed to accept everything as family. That ritual's on the Sith temple right now. Path of destruction, the Sith destruction ritual is on there now, destroying parts of yourself. But we're going into the void as Sith. When we go into the void as Sith lords, there's a there's a lot of different things that will happen as opposed to what we're doing on a Temple of the Black Serpent. You're going in there as a Sith Lord. You best believe the destruction that's coming at you is going to be a, a deeper degree, a heavier degree, because you're going in there with a so-called title already. You've done some work and you've opened the gateway to darkness, but now you're going to understand darkness on a whole nother level. The triple stage of darkness going into that void. It's a triple stage of darkness ritual we will do that will go into the void ritual for the Sith. So those who want the Sith or left the Sith, come back now. This is your choice to really get into some nitty gritty, hard hitting Sith work. Okay. But I did this video for a reason. I did it because. We all have our understanding of the void. I'm just sharing mine. But I'm also sharing that this work is eternal. It's eternal. And for us to think that we can accomplish this all in one lifetime is fooling ourselves. So you have to be you have to be fine, fine with the fact that my journey will continue after this physical body deteriorates, ceases to exist. As long as your mind is expanded to become immortal, your journey will continue and you will continue to expand and grow 
and become one of the undead gods, as we say in vampirism. Individual human beings who are vampire magicians who reach apotheosis before they translate it or while they translate it, and now share gnosis with those who are vampire as well. So this is the journey, y'all. The void is here for a reason. This process of going into the void is here for a reason. Be passionate about this work. Love your work. Give in to your work. You will be fine. If your finances are tight, you will be fine. You may have a hiccup or two, but you will be fine because as you start destroying blockages and obstacles, money starts to flow with you. It will come to you. You don't even have to do money rituals. It just comes. Because a lot of times while we don't attract or bring money into our life because we got blockages and obstacles within our subconscious mind on how we look at money in the first place. Understand money is just energy given a physical appearance in this existence, but it's just energy. If you understand energy is always and has and will always be, then you learn how to manipulate energy to your advantage. That's why some people reach billionaire status is because they are a cultist and they keep it hidden that they're a cultist. And they therefore learn how to manipulate the energy of money. Therefore, they have an abundance of money. It's a science to all of this. So check out the Temple of the Black Serpent. I'm going to wait for y'all to respond by tomorrow. And I still may just go ahead and do the shadow work class. That's going to have a high level of the inner child healing. It's going to have a high level of void work. Okay. But I am going to add it to the Sith Temple starting tomorrow. I'm going to make a, a class particularly for the Sith called the Sith Shadow Work. And it's not about veiling ourselves in the shadow, doing the work as Sith Lords in the shadow. No, it's about dealing with our shadow. And it's going to be hard hitting. All right. Infernal blessings to all. Hope to see y'all again soon. The Patreon classes are starting up this Friday. I'm going to do a unified class, and then we're going to go back to our regularly scheduled classes in two weeks. The unified class, don't miss it tomorrow, uh, Friday. We're going into a lot of stuff and what's coming down the pipe, and you want to be involved and you want to be ready because it's got a lot of work coming now. A lot. Okay? So, hopefully... I see some some new people in these classes. If you really want to transform, really want to dedicate yourself to the adversarial path and reaching apotheosis, come on down. Come and join. If you were in the classes before, these classes are nothing like they used to be. I'll be honest with you. Those classes, a lot of times, <clears throat> I left, I kept it a lightweight for a reason. I kept it lightweight to see who would make it through and who would leave so that who remain, then the work would get a little deeper, which is what we're doing now in Temple Black Serpent. Now, those who've remained in the Temple of Black Serpent, we're about to take it a little more darker into the void. That's the process, always been the process. My classes were designed exactly how the void is destruction, devouring, transmutation. Who's ever made it this far, you understand you're being devoured now. You're understanding the devouring part. Then we're going to get into the transmutation part. This is where we're at now. This is where the work is headed to. This is what's necessary. In a shadow work class, we begin with the basics of what shadow work is. We begin with the basis of dark meditation. Okay, We begin in the basis with journaling. Then we're going to get into identifying which deific mask or archetype would benefit you the most in your shadow work journey. We're not all going to do the same deific mask or archetype in the shadow work class. What we're going to do is do a reading. I will do a reading for each and every one of y'all who decide to join a shadow work class. 
and we're going to identify which deific mass is particularly yours that will benefit you the most on your journey to apotheosis. And I will do a clefothic reading that will identify which archetype is going to benefit you the most, okay? But it's not just going to be clefothic. It's also going to include Kali. It's going to include other Indian archetypes. It's going to include comedic archetypes that are all based upon the adversarial path to benefit you on your shadow work journey. So we will have classes, but each and every one of y'all will know what your archetype is to gain the most benefit in your shadow work class. And we will design a template that you can use to add your archetype into that template for your shadow work rituals that are assigned. Then eventually you have to create your own rituals and share your presentation with the class. And then we'll see those rituals, how they benefit others as well. It's all a growing process, but it's a beautiful process. All right. Infernal greetings to those that didn't greet and infernal blessings to all those who watched and will watch. Take care. Bye-bye.